But before we talk about how we use the trichlor 3-inch tablets, we have to talk a little bit about how chlorine actually works. And that's important, not that I'm going to go into the chemistry right here, but you can, if you're interested in learning more about how chlorine works, you can go to the advanced version of Pool School, which will talk a little bit more about alkalinity, talk a little bit more about pH, and we'll get into more fundamentals of how chlorine actually works. But just for the easy version, chlorine, you have to understand that chlorine, the way it works is it attaches itself to things. And when it attaches itself to things, it kills it. So if it attaches itself to an algae, it kills it. If it attaches itself to bacteria or virus or anything, it kills it. That's the way chlorine works. Now the reason that's important to understand is you have to understand that once chlorine attaches to something, it becomes stable. For example, when chlorine attaches to sodium, it forms sodium chloride. We know that as table salt. So chlorine, once it's attached to something, is no longer a poisonous killer. It is just a stable molecule. In fact, in that case, it even tastes good. So chlorine combines with things. Now, the reason you have to know that is if you can keep putting lots and lots of chlorine in your water, and let's say for some reason you had a green pool, you had a lot of algae. Well, the chlorine goes in, but then it combines with stuff. And once it's combined, it's no longer active. It's no longer effective. It's no longer killing. You think there's a lot of chlorine in there, but it's all combined up. So that's why there's a product called Shock. Now, again, there are many, many, many brands of Shock available, but there really are three basic types of Shock. And again, we're going to recommend which type of Shock you use, not based on the brand. We want to make sure you're using the right type of Shock. The three types of Shock that are available on the market is, first of all, sodium hypochlorite. Now, that's commonly known as liquid chlorine. Now, liquid chlorine is a very, very powerful shock. In fact, if you splash it on your clothes, it'll eat holes in it, bleach it white. You know, so it's not really something you're going to want to deal with all the time. Very powerful, very fast acting. One downside to liquid chlorine is when you put it in the water, you really should not go swimming for 12 to 24 hours. Now, I have a little bit of a problem with that. Why put something in the water that limits how often you can use the pool or when you can use the pool? So I'm really not ever going to recommend liquid chlorine. The second type of shock is calcium hypochlorite. Now we just talked about that a little while ago. Calcium hypochlorite is a very strong shock and it's available at pool stores and especially at the mass merchants as a shock treatment. It's very inexpensive. It does work. But the disadvantage to calcium hypochlorite is it puts calcium into the water. If you have soft water, that's good. But most of us don't. And so I don't recommend calcium hypochlorite. The type of shock that I do recommend is called potassium monopersulfate. Big word. We call it BLAST. That's our brand, is BLAST. Now what potassium monopersulfate is, it's a very, very strong oxidizing agent. But it has no chlorine in it. There's no chlorine at all. What it does, it goes in and it burns off whatever is attached to the chlorine molecule. It frees it up to go out there and kill stuff and do its job but it doesn't do it by putting chlorine in the water. And the reason that's important is if it doesn't put chlorine in the water, you can put the shock in and go swimming. So when we're talking about putting shock in on Sunday night, we're not saying don't go swimming on Sunday night with your family, even if it's a hot day. Potassium monopersulfate does the job, but it doesn't limit your use of the pool. So it's a lot safer, easier, and it works. So now that we understand how the chlorine works basically and the importance of shocking the pool to reactivate it, let's talk about the proper level of chlorine for your swimming pool. Now on the test strips, when you test your water, it's going to tell you that the ideal range is between one and three parts per million. And it is. That's the ideal range. But remember, if your pH is perfect, you can actually maintain a slightly higher chlorine level. But Let's talk about how do you maintain three parts per million in a normal pool. So the rule of thumb is you're going to use one three-inch tablet for every 5,000 gallons of your swimming pool. This is the type of tablet we're talking about. This is a three-inch trichlor tablet. So we're talking about adding one three-inch tablet for every 5,000 gallons two times per week. 
Now what that means is, for example, if you have a 24 foot by 52 inch pool, you have 15,000 gallons of water. So you're going to add three three inch tablets two times a week for a total of six tablets per week. And that should maintain three parts per million in your 15,000 gallon pool. So as a recap, one tablet for every 5,000 gallons two times per week. And then based on your gallonage of your pool, that will tell you how many three inch tablets. Now remember this is a trichlor tablet. This is also a professional strength trichlor tablet. The brand that we recommend is, of course, SwimClear. That is a professional grade tablet. What means it has a much higher level of active chlorine available to it. There are other brands. All of them, as long as you use a trichlor, will have chlorine. Of course, we would like for you to buy our brand because it's stronger. We know it works. But any three inch tablet, any trichlor three inch tablet, the rule of thumb is 5,000 gallons, one three inch tablet, two times a week. So let's talk about how do you take care of your swimming pool. Well, we recommend on Sunday night, you go out and you're gonna test, of course, for three things. You're gonna test for the alkalinity, you're gonna test for the pH, and you're test for chlorine. So let's, for argument's sake, say, say this is a 15,000 gallon pool. So you go out on Sunday night, you test the water. The alkalinity is fine, the pH is fine, which is normal for those things to stay balanced, but the chlorine level is low. Well, if it's one three inch tablet per 5,000 gallons, you're gonna add three three inch tablets to the skimmer and let them dissolve. And you're gonna let that go. Now, on Sunday nights, we recommend, just as habit, shock the pool. Now, this is a one pound bag of shock. We recommend one pound per 10,000 gallons one time a week. So we recommend on Sunday night, test the alkalinity, test the pH, add your chlorine tablets, and add one pound per 10,000 gallons of the shock. And basically you're finished. That's it. So now, Sunday you're finished. Everything's fine, you put your chlorine in, you've shocked the pool. You go out on Wednesday and you test the pool. Again, you're gonna test for alkalinity, pH, and chlorine. So again, the alkalinity is fine, the pH is fine, the chlorine level is fine. What should you add? Well, three more three inch tablets because that worked. Well, let's say you had tested the water, the alkalinity is fine, the pH is fine, and the chlorine level is low. Well, now instead of adding three three inch tablets, add four. Because many things affect chlorine use, if that's not enough, just simply add. Let's say you go out and you test for chlorine and the chlorine level is high. Well then, instead of adding three three inch tablets, just add two. What is going on here is that your chlorine level will change from a lot, a lot of factors. And what you have to simply do is get a moving average. So if it's averages three tablets two times a week, that's great. Your pool may average four tablets or two tablets. It's simply a matter of a lot of factors. Come together.